Welcome back, Crits and Failures, to the long-delayed Critical Fail podcast and video series. Uh, holy cow, do I have a lot of housekeeping to keep up with. All right. The directing job I'm working on is going great and fine, whatever. Signing the contract, going to start soon. More on that when I know it. Uh, my house flooded. Uh, I think I mentioned that in a previous podcast. I've been dealing with that, and that is coming along very well. Thank you. My tooth got the crap infected out of it. There's basically like a beholder and a demonkin and uh, a seventh circle of hell all happening under this one tooth. It knocked me out. It gave me 103 degree temperature. It gave me convulsions and it made me sick as hell. And my motherboard died on my computer. So all this stuff has been going on and I have just been swinging and punching left and right trying to make it through. So I apologize for the delay, but I am back and talking even though I am down one tooth and sitting with an ice bag in my lap. I will not stray from my path. We are going to keep this stuff coming to you guys and we appreciate your support. Special shout out to the podcast listeners. We are now tracking you guys. We know that you're out there and we know that you are a large number to behold and that excites me greatly. Please everyone share this podcast with people that you know. Leave reviews. Help spread the word because I want to push this hard. I want to get this out there. I want to get, you know, plenty of I want to get plenty of people following us so that we can do more content, more regular content for you guys. Share it on Facebook share it on reddit share it wherever you can as always this episode is brought to you by matt's mats the acrylic one inch grid system that we make and sell ourselves go to criticalfail.com critical with a one instead of an l fail.com and check them out it's the best way at the moment to directly support us working on even newer ways as we speak but right now that's the best way that we can do this we're going to keep these episodes coming hot and heavy for a little while, try and get back caught up where we should be. I really want to get a big push here and make sure that we are going for as many subscribers and followers as we can. So so as we're making the big push, you guys make the big push, and we're going to make this happen together, like some sort of badass army with keyboards and pencils. All right, folks, thanks so much for listening, and without further ado, it's Critical Fail Episode 41, Dwarven Taverns. So there you guys are standing outside of this uh, this crypt. Um, to the le- to the west is the um, the ale and rest kind of thing, yep. the food and food and drink district mm-hmm. of this former mine. And beyond it is the um, weights and measures, um, where you're supposed to meet up with Shaky. And then north is the esteemed boom boom stores. bang bangs. Yep. Did um, you have to go into each one of those crypt pieces, or uh, was it just the one? I uh, I was only down the um, hammer uh, aisle, I'll say. <laughs> and uh, oh, crypt mart, <laughs> right? Crypt. Uh, yeah, um, and they I I encountered a number of spirits at the end of that uh, row, and I. I asked them per- to portray the message to everyone down there. Okay. But I I stuck with what I knew, which was hammer. Hammer time. All right. So, uh, <laughs> where would you like to go next, guys? You want to go over and pick up Shaky and his, uh, your new goblin horde? I, I wouldn't mind poking around the ale and rest Try, just a little. Trying to find a beer? Trying to find the, the ale. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What happens to ale after... Three centuries. Oh, it, it goes bad. <laughs> right. Um, maybe a wine? A dwarf no, no, no. It becomes amazing. <laughs> dwarf right. never gives up hope on a good ale. It's, <laughs> it is dwarven ale, so I've got hope that yes. it's still good. It's just sturdy. That's fine. I'm not, I'm not you know. Um, okay, so you guys make Ooh, your way. smells another good song in the making sure. of this one. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and the dwarf who was a thirsty. Yep. So you walk past the first one. Like, they all have uh, stone signs hanging out, you know, still hanging up um, mm-hmm. after all these years. No, because um, they're dwarven built. Exa- of course they're still hanging. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and they seem to be taverns and inns and gambling halls, and they have different kind of symbols uh, etched into the one. The first one you pass is the, um, says the Bloody Body is the name of the yeah, uh, I'm establishment. Yeah, i avoid that one. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, the next one is Binwin's Ale and Fries. I like Binwin. Should we investigate? I know of a bin. Go see if Scott Kurtz is inside. Yeah. (laughs) 
Um, we'll, do you want to go inside that one? Yeah, let's let's poke around in that one. Okay. Like you it. you uh, push open the stone door to this building and note that the only other exit um, is uh, made out of wood. And um, it and the table shoved against it are warped and swollen. Uh, indeed, the table only barely deserves that description. Its surface is rippled into waves, and one leg doesn't even touch the floor. Uh, the door shows signs of someone having tried to chop through it from the other side, but it looks like they gave up. Okie doke. Okie doke. That's, you, the, that's the only thing in the room? Uh, it's a bunch of tables and chairs that were kind of like pushed off to the side. It looks like something or someone holed up in here for <clears> briefly, and then, um, you know... Gave up on it or moved on. Moved on. Yep. Uh, so, there doesn't really seem... I mean, you can poke around some more. I'm just That's kind of what you see when you first walk in. Is there, like, a cellar or anything? Um, sure. Uh, make a perception check. Gladly. Hmm. Eight? <laughs> um... Yeah, you seem... You, you seem, like, unable to quickly... You know, no stairs going down. No, you know, secret... Super pretty cool trap doors. All right. Maybe they, any, maybe they didn't sell alcohol. <laughs> don't see any kegs right. anywhere. All right. right. Not in this one. I'm, I'm good to... Ben wins! <clears throat> How dare you. All right. So you walk out uh, heading west. The next place is called the, the Clay Platters. No? I'll take a look in there. Okay. <laughs> the, right. uh, uh, you push open um, stone door to this building and... Um, uh, oh, I have the same description twice. Um, it, it, it appears to be kind of like a dead-end building, but then you note that um, several metal plates on the walls set at about eye height. Um, looking more closely, you can see that one of these plates um, is slid aside and re reveals um, kind of like a uh, like a peephole. Um, it, it, like there's light coming through, so if, do you want to look through it? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Um, Says the guy who lost a finger a in a dwarf. trap. Yeah, just don't, just don't stick anything into the hole. Right. Because um, eye height for a dwarf is a different height for you. Right. <laughs> Wait for it. Wait so, for it. So you, uh, you, um, you peek through, and, and um, you, you're just looking into darkness because your light can't cast through there. Um, you know what I mean? I, I, I push him aside and look through. Okay. <laughs> Because I know what's happening here. Sure. Um, there's a small room inside. It has, like, a little table and maybe, like, a rotted away bed. And that's how you can make out. Does it appear to be a secret kind of a room? Or um, it, do I see doors that maybe could lead that direction? Uh, yeah. They're down to the one end, there's a door that, that could hook back around and possibly lead down there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, curious. You you gonna go look, Bard? Yeah. Okay. So the Bard goes down and opens the door and peeks down and, and down the other way. So hooking back and lining up with all the metal plates and bowls and stuff is um kind of like open stall style rooms that just kind of seem to they don't really have a door or walls or doors on the other side. Um, you may have stumbled into a house of sin. It's a brothel. It's a brothel. Understood. All right. Well, if you can't currently... afford a stall, maybe you can look through the plate. <laughs> Currently, uh, I do not see any company in which I want to peep upon. Sure. <laughs> so you, you see, or with folks, like, oh no, <laughs> close. Or <laughs> starts to dance. And yeah. I've already left oh, at that boy. point. Hey, I've um, already got like a performance of six. Yeah, <laughs> hey. awesome. So leave. Okay. I'm out. So you guys uh, quickly leave. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, the next place is called um, the Rock Bunk Tavern. Excellent. Excellent. I'm in. All right. <laughs> um, you look into the room and you see um, three other exits. It's actually kind of opened on all four sides. A fairly large kind of uh, sitting room. A bunch of stone um, benches and tables actually here, so they fairly haven't moved or anything. Um, there's four skeletons, four dwarven skeletons um, dressed in super old clothing of a style you can't even recognize anymore. Rusting armor. Um, kind of like lay on the floor. Um, though they're kind of in more of a position of um, repose than violence. M meaning they're not like, you know... Like, they didn't look like they died. Funny, kind of looked like they sat down mm. and expired. So a little more peaceful than yeah, than yeah, normal. Yeah. All right, I'm going to look look around. Look around a little. Sure. Uh, make a perception check. <laughs> uh, seventeen. Nice. Yeah. Um, pretty quickly, <laughs> you find in the back, you find a um, 
uh, a double. It's got it's a it's a stone slab on the floor with four rings in it um, that looks like it's meant to be lifted up by more than one person. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna search the uh, the bodies. Okay. Um. While Thornton's not looking, you <laughs> search the bodies, and and um, I'll say you come across um, let's just say uh, four dwarven trinkets, and I'll describe figure out what they are a little bit later. But you know, like a couple necklaces and a couple rings or something like that. Um, okay. And if I come up with some kind of clever description later, I'll let you you know or ask me about them later, and I'll come up with something. Um, okay. Yeah, just a, like some kind of personal effects. Nothing else really seems to <laughs> worthy of use or value, but um, but these were definitely personal items. Okay. Besides the floor, yeah, lifter thingy. Nothing else really jumped out Nothing at else. you. Yeah. All right. I say, hey guys, let's let's pick this thing up and see what's going on down there. Okay. Um, okay. Head towards the cellar. Yes. So all of you make a strength check, and your total has to be more than thirty-five. Okay. To combine total. <laughs> that didn't help. Thirteen. Six. It's all on. Oh god. Nope. Yeah, so you guys, like, Urth lifts his side up. <laughs> and Shaki's like, are you guys even lifting? And he just drops it back down. Would you guys like to try again? Yeah. I think I would. Wait a second. Are there any tables or, or stable um, wood? I'm sure you could find something, yeah. You could find them. Um, try to uh, use some leverage on it. Enough to make a lever? Yeah. Um. Yeah, it's kind of hard to wedge. The stone fits fairly tightly, but you could definitely pull up on one side and wedge something under it, you know? Okay. Yeah. Sounds good to me. Okay, so you guys do so. Make a strength check again. Uh, four. Ten. One. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so so Thornton and <laughs> Urth lift up on one side, and Liam's job is to shove the piece of board <laughs> under there. Uh, he, you guys see it go under there, so of course you let go, and it lands on, on Liam's thumb for one point of damage. <laughs> and I was complicit. expecting it to be like, <laughs> <laughs> no, smack him. No, not yet. <laughs> um, but sure enough, you got the board under one side. All right. Yeah. First bit of damage I, I took all day. Up. Man, okay. somebody else must have wrapped up playing D and D. We got a bunch of people. Hello, everyone who has joined us on our stream. Thank yeah. you for joining us. We love you all, and we'll talk to you at some point. You're awesome. Yes. Um, okay. Um, okay, so... Try, trying one more time? <laughs> I've got an idea. You sit on the board, <laughs> and the rest of us <laughs> will lift. The other side? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Go ahead, uh, you two make a strength check, um, and make it higher than 25 today. Ten. Oh. What are you rolling over there, man? 12. 10 and 12. Mm. Okay, close enough. You guys get it up and you slide it over. I um, wish I was helping. It slides. It slides a little bit and catches Liam's pants and kind of like like tears a fine line across his buttocks, but um, but doesn't hurt him. Just kind of like just tore a little bit on his pants, but he doesn't notice. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just kind of nudge the bard and point at the tear in the pants at the, uh, at the crack, suggesting uh, some prestidigitation to at least cover it up. Now, can you at the moment would they be able to see this tear in my pants if I have a cloak on over it though? No, not, not necessarily. Maybe not. Yeah. They just caught a glimpse. Oh, okay. They, they caught a glimpse of the moon and then it, the cloak fell oh, away. Yeah. Oh, okay. So. <laughs> so Thornton is just chuckling. And the, the the raven feathers yeah. fall to its side. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you felt a breeze for a second, but then it went away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was weird. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, so you guys have this thing. You guys managed to get it up and slide it over very, very pathetically. And um, that, there is a very small, narrow, kind of very steep uh, staircase leading down into some sort of cellar. I head on down. Absolutely. Um, you, you cannot bring your pack down here. <laughs> you just okay. isn't enough room for that. So, I've been so very. I set it up there and say, "Watch this." Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, you make your way down, and your eyes shift back over to uh, night vision or, or dark, dark vision. vision yeah. And um, uh, sure enough, you find yourself down into this place. Um, it kind of has a. Um, I don't know, maybe the smell of paint or something like that. Very, very weird, kind of faintly chemical smell from a long time ago. Um, and sure enough, there were a bunch of casks kind of lining up the various walls. And most of them are rotted away and don't exist. But there is one that, um, that one that actually it looks like maybe they were, I'm just completely making this up. <laughs> we're uh, experimenting with the idea of stone casks and seeing what would happen. And at least that one hasn't rotted away and it's got a metal spigot on the front made of silver. Tarnished okay. silver. Tarnished silver. Alright. 
Well, I uh, <laughs> cut my hand, <laughs> open it, <laughs> and then smell it. So I'm um, sure enough, a liquid comes into your hand, and it actually tingles and almost burns, but it's it's tolerable. And you smell brandy, like uh, no, no, let's say um, what's fancier than brandy? Something fancier than brandy. A uh, rum. Whiskey. You smell a, like a like a very. Um, Pretty sure rum is not. No, than but I, but but you smell a very complex rum. Okay, a very aged rum. Yeah, very something. All right, a little hint I, uh, of granite. <laughs> I take a quick. Um, it tastes wonderful. It tastes wonderful. It's, it's good stuff. Sure, man. You hell. immediately hit the floor, <laughs> <laughs> and you're dead. You feel a feeling you haven't felt in three weeks, <laughs> which is a little bit buzzed. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so nothing in my adventurer's pack. Okay. There's got to be a jar or a flask or something. I'm going to go back up the stairs because I don't trust them to do it right. Sure. Uh, grab what has to be a container out of part of the brewer's Sure, pack. absolutely, yeah. Head back down. Fill it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Go back up <laughs> and, like, very lovingly set it down in front of everyone. He brings up this, like, really kind of crappy old dusty bottle that has something sloshing around in it, and he sets it down in front of you. What do you do? He's like, what is it? eh? No, eh? Now, okay. It's strong. <laughs> just, just a question for my own curiosity. Yeah. Has there ever been, like, games where, like, somebody's character is always just sloshed and then like you just always have like disadvantage because you're drunk and you can't actually see straight or how how would I, that work i haven't played in one like that but it could absolutely happen i've had dms who in real in real life were sloshed the whole time and it was a miserable oh. game <laughs> <laughs> all right playing with katanas next to their necks and stuff like that but that was a different game <laughs> that was uh, probably closer to college i imagine that was literally college yeah yeah, yeah we're in our 30s now mm-hmm some of us. Some we, of we, only drink, we only drink fine dwarven rum from stone casks that probably could never work. <laughs> right. From Jamaica. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think that's a Venezuelan rum, actually, I've got up there. There you go. It's close mm-hmm. enough. Close enough. Yeah, a it's dwarven Venezuelan. <laughs> dwarven, yes. He's got a fine... A dwarven Zalen? Dwarven Zalen rug. Uh, a rum. <laughs> um, <laughs> so there it is. You set it down... Um, they don't really respond or react. All right, I pick it up and take a quick. It's the spot, man. <laughs> a tip burns and tickles all the way down, and when you breathe out, you can kind of feel the um, just the various um, uh, ingredients and stuff that must have gone through there. And even your refined palate has a hard time recognizing everything, probably because of age. You know, who knows what happens to Mayberry flowers or whatever after three hundred years? But um, <laughs> sugar cane. But you don't die. <laughs> I don't die. <laughs> I'm also. I'm also immune to disease. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, I'm pretty sure that this would kill any disease. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, you feel... Um, you know that later you're going to be cleaned right out, but right now it feels pretty good. It's about time. Yeah, it's fine. It tingles, it, it goes right through your body, and you feel kind of like a little... Like a like um, electricity all the way through your fingertips. All right. How, uh, how often do you get the opportunity to try a 300-plus-year-old... Whatever. Dwarf so, and rum. I, I don't know. It's up to Thornton if you get the pissed, opportunity. So no oh, no. Idea. I'm sharing. Okay, you're sharing. So so Thornton hands it to you, uh, Urith. I'm imagining okay. the thing I grabbed is about a liter of sure, liquid. Sure, Yeah. And there's I'm no way I'm a very drinking. small swig of this stuff, knowing that some, dwarves' yeah. history. <laughs> some My part, constitution's a little different than yours. Some part of you guys <laughs> is like, don't light a match anywhere near this thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, man. Urith, uh, same feeling, man. Just a... Uh, uh, like the strongest whiskey ever, but but not unpleasant. It's just like it's like being hit by a train that you love, you know. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense at all. But it, it goes down, and and um, just a little sip is enough to kind of make you go, whoa. Yeah, that's good. Anybody tell I've never drank before? <laughs> Man, you're doing okay. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm going with like the Ober cough Love syrup drink. prescription or yeah. something. I don't know. Uber cough. <laughs> Uber cough syrup. No, there is some warming factor. Yeah, to absolutely. Liquor. Yeah, yeah. It's got everything. Um. So, so I'm I'm also gonna take the the, the cup and take a swig. Okay. And then noticing that Thornton is a little upset that Worth and I have had the cup for so long, <laughs> I'm gonna pretend to trip a little bit. 
to, to see what he does. <laughs> Make a performance check. <laughs> A four. I hope it's not a natural one. It was close uh, enough. Three. Yeah. <laughs> he is clearly being an asshole at the jug of liquid that she just got. I still dive to catch him. <laughs> <laughs> As if jumping in front of the king. <laughs> right. Oh, I love to it. To spare yeah. a single drop. Absolutely. You do so. Um, and it doesn't fall, you're just there. And then you realize what he's been doing. <laughs> I call him an ass. <laughs> I knew what he was doing, but I, I was know. afraid his doing it would actually would, result absolutely, yeah. in spilling. Yeah. yeah. So. And then you would have to kill him. <laughs> as as the dwarven way. U- Ula would have struck him down That's upon right. that moment. I wouldn't have to kill him. <laughs> Ula would take my hand. <laughs> like that just works itself out. <laughs> <laughs> you just like throw a match at him. <laughs> um, all right. So this stuff does give me an, an idea. Okay. Considering the fortification we're coming up against here, yeah, in the esteemed crafts dwarves, do you suppose we could make some kind of a uh, mala dwarf cocktail? Yeah, absolutely, oh. absolutely. So, uh, do I see we... any glass where um, anywhere in this? If you're willing to, um, I'll say that you know you can poke around here in a couple other buildings and absolutely come up with some unbroken. Do we, okay. Do we need to go back to the bloody body? No, because <laughs> I am not risking part of that brewer's kit. Right. No. That's right. all going back. It's That's a, a kit. It goes. Just it's like a it's set. Back. And this jar that you have is part of that set. Um, right. Yeah. So no. So, uh, um, you didn't have a water flask or anything like that on you. Um, it doesn't actually say you just no. have rations. You don't actually no. have like a water skin. Well, I would definitely assume. I mean, otherwise you'd be dead by now. So I would definitely assume that you had a water skin too. Yeah. Um, but you know, as long as you had rations, I wasn't going to worry about it. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you poke around and you find um, various sizes of flasks. How many are you looking for? Um, enough so that I'm not wasting any of what's in my <laughs> container. I just mean, how many Molotovs are you looking to make? Oh. Well, at least six, one for each hand. Okay, and then is that in addition to the the stuff that you poured out? Are you going to go pour them from below? Well, I'm going to empty it. Into them? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll go below if I need to. Yeah, to fill up six, um, roll a 1d6 and we'll see how many you find. Three. Three. Yeah, we'll say you find three bottles, and but they're fairly sizable, and, you know... You, you fill them up from that liter bottle. Okay, and then I take a piece of the clothes off of, yeah. you know, the, the skeletons. Oh, yeah. But, you know, like the bottom of the pants. They, they would have of... wanted it this way. Right. <laughs> and yeah. so I, you know, fashion it into a, a lightable. Very cool. Uh, throwable. Right. How does Thornton's heart feel about what he's going to do to this booze? Um, at this point, he's so pleased to just have found any whatsoever. Uh-huh. Uh, he's he's reminiscing of being able to just order it at any bar he walks into, <laughs> and is is ready to work his way out of this this place. I like to imagine that as he's um working, he's kind of mumbling to himself like, "Hey bartender, hi hey, Thornton, how you doing today? Hello, oh, nice to see you. Welcome back. <laughs> like, welcome back to the slotted eel. What kind of ale would you want? Options? <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all." <laughs> Um, okay, so you finish up your um, your diabolical uh, guerrilla warfare feat, and there you are sitting with with these things now. Um, you've got more than you can carry, you know. Or okay. well, no, you got three. Yeah, I have carry, three. But... So I give one to each of these guys mm-hmm. and say, "Light the fabric, throw it enemy <laughs> at at the enemy or whatever you think might burn fairly well." Yeah, and we'll say that a Molotov cocktail kind of translates makes sense to people. My nap. No. Um, okay. Everybody kind of gets what we're going. Why not? Especially since everyone tasted what it was and realized yeah. the yeah, potency. Yeah, 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 yeah. <gasps> yeah. Whoa. Um, okay. So there, so you do, there, you guys are standing inside of this um, this place that was the Rock Bunk Tavern. You finish up your your thing. Are you gonna head out now or? Yeah, I say let's go meet up with uh, with Shaky. Okay. You uh, you walk past the shit kicker in the glory hole and you make your way west towards the um. So hold on. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Were these predetermined names? Uh huh. <laughs> the glory hole wasn't the brothel. Nope. Okay. Just keep. <laughs> Thornton just like ear you know blinders himself and keeps on walking. Um. And I just say, 
This is why I don't know what all dwarves will do. <laughs> As we walk by. <laughs> and, um... Yep. Anyway. <laughs> so, okay, so you guys make your way over to the um, weights and measures. Um, huge... Oh, okay. So so you come up to a fairly nondescript building. Um, it's got just a single do- but wide door on the doorway on the front, and it's completely open, and you hear the chitter-chatter of goblins inside. Perfect. Let's go in. All right. You guys make your way in. Um, and what was that? Oh, yeah. The room is not what you would have expected. It, it is, um, you can't even tell, like, what you, what, you, what you would have expected was probably some sort of a, um, <laughs> geez, the gap, the claw, the claw, okay. the claw, um. You go gap, goblins. <laughs> the, uh. Oh, they don't, that's good. He's, yeah, he's like, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> he lets him smell it, though. Uh, so you would have expected maybe some sort of, um, you know, uh, measures and, and ta- tabulating kind of room and whatever. Um, instead, you see, like, huge rusty metal blades jutting out of cracks in the walls and rusted spikes projecting down from the ceiling. And you can only imagine that it was either, that it must have been trapped heavily at one time but was, was apparently triggered um, or something. But nothing, no, there's no, like, dead bodies here. It just looks like... Some sort of a mess, like of of trap attempting this that never quite made sense and didn't get reset. Hmm. The room is just basically, like it was foundationally torn apart on the walls and stuff, and has like spikes pointing in. In my head, I'm just like, "Time's up, let's do this, Leo." <laughs> 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 